Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Tim. Today, I am joining here on uh, Sam's channel to talk about a little game that you all might know. Uh, this game that we're talking about today not only is in the title of the video, but it's going to be a surprise right here in camera. <laughs> um, Villainous, one of Sam's favorite games. Honestly, one of mine too. Uh, such an epic game. And we are stoked to tell you about a game that we may not be um, disagreeing on this time. Because last time we freaking disagreed <laughs> on only two points, actually. Surprisingly, it wasn't too much with Dune Imperium. It was yeah. only two points. Um, yeah. But only yeah, but two we both points. love this game, so it should be fun to figure out what's wrong with it and what's not wrong with it. This is definitely going to be, yeah, this is definitely going to be a lot softer of a video, you know, even though it was only like, here's the thing. I feel like we pretty much mostly agree on Dune yeah. Imperium. There's just a couple of things that mm -hmm. we disagree on. I don't, I'm actually curious to find out because here's the thing is like, I've covered a lot of Disney villainous, but one thing that I've never done is like actually properly reviewed the game. Oh yeah, that's true. Like all the ranking videos, all the strategy <laughs> guides, that is so true. Uh, yeah. I, I do a lot of content yeah. on this game, but I have never like given uh, an opinion on it. Like nobody knows. I mean, except I've I've said that I mm -hmm. like the game. I've said that I enjoy the game, everything. But you know, what if I like secretly despise this game? <laughs> Plot twist: <laughs> the master of villainy secretly despises villainy. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> I, I, that would be crazy. And also it's, it's completely untrue. I love this game, but yeah, um, that would be pretty yeah. funny though. Yeah. So I guess, I guess I have a question okay. for you and that is, um, why did it take you so long to get Disney villainous? Because dude, I was telling you a you long were, time, yep. mm -hmm. you should try mm -hmm. this out. And it took you a long time to jump in. What 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 made yeah, you jump in? Because like I binged through all your videos, dude. Like every strategy guide. And I was like, dude, this game looks so good. And I feel like it's because it was just on a retail shelf. Like honestly, that was the most superficial reasoning. That that was it. I feel like it was just because I've always seen it on a retail shelf. So I kind of categorized it along with Settlers of Catan and like all the other mainstream games. I, like I kind of just eh, brush it off until until Target Dang. had a sale on it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> here's my chance so i'll just grab it um and can't brush it yeah, off dude, anymore it freaking blew my mind like how good it was honestly it like blew my freaking mind it was so fun like everyone i've introduced it to is so fun they've enjoyed it i you know what funny thing is we might have jumped ahead of ourselves well maybe we didn't but if you are watching this and you don't know what disney villainous is let's give you a little little uh a little brief overview essentially what this game is Disney Villainous. This is, oh gosh, how do you even explain this? this? <laughs> magic in a box. Um, it's a, it's magic yeah. in a box. Yeah, it's a, it's a card game at its core. It is a card game. Essentially, you have a 30 card deck, which is your villain deck. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically complete your nefarious deeds as one of the Disney villains, now Pixar villains, which we'll get into a little bit. But, um, one of the Disney villains and it's super, super thematic. So like if you're playing Captain Hook, your goal could be something as crazy as um, you have to defeat Peter Pan at the Jolly Roger or, you know, you play Prince John and he's all consumed with money. And so he all he has to do is collect 20 money, essentially 20 power in the game. And all of them are trying to complete their goals. And the first person to complete their goal wins the game. And you do that by collecting power, using that power to play cards on their board. Every single board is unique. Every deck is unique too. These boards are so cool. They open up like this. Like, look at that. Look at that. And then they have all the different locations that are in the movie that it belongs to. There's also a 15 card fate deck. These are the white decks that you get with each villain. And this essentially just has all of the heroes in that villain story and they just are there to make your life miserable. And so that's kind of the main way that you stop your opponents from completing their goals is you play a fate on them and you draw cards from that deck and play one in their realm and they can do crazy things, you know, like with Gaston, Mrs. Potts can cause some serious damage, you know, it's just like the silliest yeah. stuff because it's really just, it's Disney characters, but it's such an intense game sometimes. That's kind of a brief overview. I don't know if that was like, I don't know if that actually helped you realize what kind of game it is, but essentially it is a no, card dude, game. See, that's the thing. Like, I hope people on your channel see, like, that was all one take. That was all Sam, one take. If I were to do that, 
again, <laughs> it would take me a million takes to get that done. Like that was so freaking impressive. The fact that you can even like tell me like the actual card count that you get in your deck. I'd be like, oh, you, you have some cards in your hand and you play it down and you move your marker. Like that's my explanation versus yours. <laughs> So bad Dude, I'm a huge home. nerd, man. I, I, I count, I count cards, man. I, I, I'm just a nerd, really. At the end of the day, and I, and also I really like this yeah. game, so that also helps. Dude, my my experience with this game. So originally, I saw a video. I think, I think it was a, it was either a playthrough on um, Game Played Live. I think is what it was called. Or no, no, um, Game mm-hmm. the Game. Mm-hmm on geek and sundry they they played disney villainous and i remember watching that playthrough and being like oh my gosh this is the perfect game for me and my wife she is a disney fanatic and i was kind of thinking the whole time like this is perfect this is just like this this will work i ended up getting the original box which is this one this is the very first box it comes with six villains and i remember opening it up and we were looking through all the components and i brought it over to my friends and we all just played a a big game because it goes up to six players i think we played all five like five a a five player game we all played and we're just like figuring out our villains and everything and it was like the coolest experience ever like i i don't regret it at all even even though it took a long time to actually uh play because you know a lot of players it was super engaging because every single card is like super thematic in this game. Like you'll, you'll be having a hand of cards and you'll like be able to retell the stories that have come up and like, you can see moments in the movie and everything. The art is really beautiful. It's not just like screen caps from the movie. You know, Tim, this is one thing that I hate about when games do is when they, when they actually have um, an Uh IP and they just take pictures of the game. And then they put those pictures of, or sorry, pictures uh, of the movie, and they put those pictures on the cards. Like, that's the card. Yeah, like when I see that, honestly, it's just a complete turn off. I'm like, ugh, whatever. <laughs> complete, yeah. complete turn off. Disney Villainous, though, is like, hey, you know what? We're going to treat this IP with respect. And so all the artwork is absolutely mm-hmm. gorgeous. Amazing work. Shout out to the artists yeah, there. Yeah, by far. Um, Tim. Here's a question for you. Do you have a favorite villain to play yet? In the base game. We're just going to go over the base game so far. Um, oh, yeah, we can talk about hmm. anything. There's so many expansions to There you. are. Um, oh, I feel gosh. like in the base game, Jafar by far is like, by far, is like my favorite villain nice. to play because he's just always <laughs> milling cards, you know? And I think it's like so fun to just like mm-hmm. go through your entire deck, just like keep milling cards. I feel like because you're constantly <laughs> physically moving cards in and out, um, with all his discard power, it just makes it completely fun. It reminds me of a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh playing like as Jafar. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Yes, it, the yeah, card yeah. play, uh-huh. the card play. Yeah, no, Jafar is like that. I, I kind of, dude. Yeah, he's yeah. super fun. There's so many like little tricks with Jafar too, like playing the playing the scimitar and then discarding the scimitar yeah. for three power, so you gained like two power, but you just like set it aside for a little bit. See, it's I didn't even know cool. he was a milling deck um, until you told me, and then that's when it really clicked in. I was like, oh my god, the whole point of this is to cycle through a deck to find the freaking yeah. lamp and everything. I was like, oh wow, that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Yeah, and that's the other thing, dude. Um, I guess I can say my favorite just before I get off track here. My favorite was probably well, my first favorite was actually Prince John. I think. Oh, and it was Prince John before. It changed. This one. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was Prince John. And it changed probably to Captain mm-hmm. Hook. But I've always liked both of them. And I think I, I still I still love both of them, obviously. But I think it's probably a little bit more Captain Hook now than Prince yeah. John for me. He's just so fun. I, I, I like Captain Hook because it's just like, it's so rude what you can do with him. And you just kind of like, it's more of like a control yeah. deck in a way. Cause you're like, you're, you're setting down all of your allies and you're just prepared mm-hmm. for anything that comes your way. Essentially, you need to make it to where anything that's played on your board, you can deal with yeah. immediately and as quickly yeah. as possible. And I always liked that aspect of it. It's a lot of yeah. planning, almost like a blue magic deck. I mean, so you also ranked him, I think what, second, <laughs> right? On your ranking list. Yes, on the power ranking list. I think I put yeah. him at second or third. Second. I think so I put him at does second. him being ranked on second contribute to him being your favorite too? So, no. No. Okay. No, I actually just enjoy his card play. Like, I think he's super fun. I think he's a very well-designed character. In my opinion, I think he's the best designed character in the in the mm-hmm. initial six. Just, I think he's a very, very fleshed out and like full-bodied and just interesting. So, so good. Um, but I realized that like, if you know how to play Captain Hook, dude, 
you, you just you just yeah. do your thing and he's just really really strong yeah. like i mean you can make it to where your opponent doesn't want to fate you because they might give you peter pan but if your opponent doesn't fate you then you're just like successful over here and you're just doing all the things that you're doing right but then when they do fate you it's like oh thank you you gave me peter pan or you got me a little closer so either way your opponent can't really play against yeah. it very well i found yeah. so that's kind of why I found him to be so powerful. And also, my, my, my list of ranking is not definitive by any means, but a lot of people agreed with yeah. it, so that's cool. I mean, okay, so so despite him being number two, I was wondering who do you think is the most difficult to play? I mean, I also, I feel like she's ranked lower, uh, way, way lower than Captain Hook, but who do you think is the most difficult to play in the base game? In the mm-hmm. base game? Yeah. Ursula. Yep she's a mess to deal with like Ursula, i never give I, every time i introduce this game for the first time i never give people or some like eh, just avoid her for now because it's confusing kind of right yeah yeah she's she's mm-hmm. tough yeah it was it was one of those things where like ursula i feel like was a character that it just took it just took longer for people to really understand how she operates and honestly i i still personally believe that the way that people play her now well wasn't the way that she was intended or designed to be played. Ooh, like I, okay, I actually believe, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I truly believe that this character was designed to be easier than we think she is. But I think that she's just been played so many times that people have now realized that she is not, everything in your deck doesn't work the way that the designer is almost like intended it to uh-huh. work. Does that make sense? Yeah, but like how so? so like like it, with it's, the way she's supposed yeah, to get yeah, yeah. So, or, yeah. For example, like, okay, here's an example. The, you're able to like move your lock token from one side of your board to the other side. It can go from, uh, I believe, the palace to her lair. Now, you never want to you never want to cover Ursula's lair. <laughs> like this, this know. villain, if you cover Ursula's lair, like it actually sets you back so much, especially if you can't move that lock token back to the palace. So it's like, they put these things in here and it almost seems like, Oh, I should do this. I should do that because mm-hmm. it's a thing that I can do. Right. But mm-hmm. it seems like everything in her deck, when you do it, it actually just slows you down. <laughs> and that that's yeah. rough. So I think that one of the ways that like, I think people have found out to play this character is that it ends up becoming a thing where you essentially have to wait until all your fates are already out on your board because Mm -hmm. all of your fates set you back when they're played on your realm. But once they're on there, they're kind of useless. And so once you get all your fates on there, you're good. Now you can just win. It'll just take a little while. (laughs) Yeah. What the? I just realized too, her lair is the only place where you can activate cards. Yeah. You can't win without access to the lair. (laughs) Yeah. No, you literally can't win. So it's, it's kind of a, it's almost like a little trap. I don't know how to explain it. I didn't realize that until now. I, I truly believe that the character was designed with a different way of playing in mind. And you know what? Here's, here's really the thing. And I think that this is an important concept of this game. Here's an important concept, Tim. We're going to talk about okay. this right now. Let's do it. Yeah. This game right here is, at its core, a family strategy game. Okay? It is a family uh-huh. strategy game. Emphasis on the family part. I don't think that this game was ever intended to be played competitively or to be played at like a high-level card play uh, way. Like, I don't think the designers had that in their intention at all. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. But at the end of the day, yeah. I think it's it was a family game intended for families to play it and just have fun. Not to not to, you know, master every single card, count the cards, mm-hmm. discard everything mm-hmm. in your hand, yeah. get to your goal and win. You know, maybe yeah. some villains were designed with a little bit more um strategy in mind, but I think at the end of the day it was a family game. What do you think about that? See, I 100% agree. If I think like what I'm curious to know about is what their intentions were to start out with because their base game i can see that 100 percent, right i agree but going into like the marvel expansions where the complexity just like completely is not family friendly anymore and that's what i'm curious about like knowing because i for sure i'm pretty sure they planned out expansions for this right um, but i'm just wondering if the complexity and strategy was meant to be at that point of Marvel villainous because that's honestly is a, I feel like it's an entirely different game 
oh yeah uh the base game oh yeah you know? we haven't even holy moly yeah uh yeah i think i think what okay let's see what happened yeah. here i don't know this is my personal opinion and i could be totally wrong but you know this is the time for those opinions to come out right yeah, so exactly. i just i don't know why i do this to myself but like when i when i see a game i see a lot of asymmetry because this game is at its core an asymmetric game that can be played mm-hmm. by anyone when I found that out, which asymmetric, if you don't know what that means, it means that, you know, your goal of the game is different than another person's goal of the game. So two people do not have the same starting positions or end positions. They are playing different games, essentially, that work under the same system. And mm-hmm. this is a game that plays like an asymmetric game, but it is able to be played by anyone, which is amazing. Like, what a great feat. Like, I can't think of many yeah. games that can do this, that can be taught like as easily as villainous is and have a different experience depending on which villain you're playing. Amazing. Like kudos mm-hmm. to the designers for that. I think that the game did not start off very competitive, but I think what ended up happening was that as I started making strategy guides, and I'm not going to say this is only me, but I will say that I was the first person to make strategy guides online. I was the first person to put these out on mm-hmm. at, at least in video form. I don't know about written strategy guides. But there was a community behind that because these videos got a lot of views very quickly on my channel. There was a community that wanted that. And that community just kept growing and growing and growing until eventually another community started, which was like competitive Disney villainous. That whole thing started and got crazy. I think the designers started kind of working a little bit more to make villains a little bit more competitive after that. So I don't think the game started off like that, but I think that now it's Mm -hmm. an, it's a thought in the design process now. Mm -hmm. And that's cool too. Like, I don't mind it. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm for that too. Right. It just, like when we talk about Marvel villainous later, I just feel like there's a, a, almost a cap to where you should be increasing that point to where it's like not as inviting as this base game. Yes, Marvel you know? villainous is not as easy of a game. And I don't think it's 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 not like one that I could say that I could just teach to anybody. There's so many moving mm-hmm. parts in Marvel. There's so many different rules that you have to learn. It, even for if you're coming from the background of playing villainous, like I think it's a more complex game as a whole. It's very strategic. And I think it's better with groups too. I don't know if you've found mm-hmm. that, but one versus one with Marvel villainous is not very satisfying for me. I much prefer Disney villainous if I'm doing one versus one. And uh, Marvel villainous, I really like with groups of like three or four personally. Yeah. No, for sure. I agree too because, um, when we played Marvel Villainous, Villainous for the first time, it was one on one, and then uh, Jackie played as Modok, and I played as I think Ultron, one of those characters, or um, Madame Mask. Oh, right? okay. And it was just not fun for her. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. It it just took one ability. I forget what the ability is, where it just drops his bar all the way down. Oh um, right, it takes the loyalty yeah, all one. the way down. Is it event yeah, card? Yeah. The event card that comes out, like a, the white fate card that comes out either the event card or like one of his fate cards right or right, one of the right. fate cards yeah right and it just drops him all the way down and it's like okay then what's the point of me building so it just became instead of like a 30 minute game it honestly became like a two hour game oh my gosh <laughs> so it was yeah it was just not fun and then that's why we were so surprised like compared to this so i feel like it's almost not a fair comparison if you're looking at the base game of villainous versus the marvel one because those are two completely different ones Right. Yeah. They are completely yeah. different games. I, I think that when we talk about villainous, the things that I say, um, if mm-hmm. I don't specify which villainous, don't try not to get confused which villainous I'm talking about because yeah, they're just, they're different games at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But actually what you're just bringing up right now might actually mm-hmm. be the first thing that I actually do have a problem with the game. I actually do. Okay. I do have a problem with the game sometimes. Ooh, Lord of the Board has a problem with villainous. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've never gotten <laughs> to talk about this because I don't really focus on this kind of stuff. But, you know, a lot of the villains originally had start of turn abilities um, where okay. when they would win the game, they would have to be like a start of your turn thing. Even Hook has start of your turn. Uh, no, no, sorry. Hook does not have a start of your turn. But a lot of villains do have start of your turn. What I mean by that is like when you're playing Prince John, you have to get to 20 power and then have 20 power still at the start of your turn. Mm-hmm. This is what would happen when we would play. A villain would get to the point where they would get at the point of winning and then Once that happens, everybody around the table would just face that one player. Mm -hmm. And dude, 
as much fun as this game is, there is not anything more unfun than getting faded three times by your friends. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't feel good. It's not a good, it's, I, I mean, I won't, I don't want to say it's not a good mechanic, but the design principle there, it, it, it's like, it's one of the, the weakest points of the design in my opinion. And I don't know what you would do to fix it either, but it, it just ends up happening naturally yeah. every time. Yeah. It's like, so the thing though that I like though, is that they're not really doing those types of villains anymore. Start of your turn mm -hmm. is kind of in the past now. <laughs> yeah. All the new yeah. goals are immediate. So you can feel clever now. You can, you can be sneaky. You can play your game all sneak like, and then come out of nowhere and be like, screw you. I just won out of nowhere, sucker. You know, yeah. like that, that feels good. <laughs> that feels really good. Cause now you don't have to worry about the, I'm getting faded by like all my friends just because, oh wow, I'm so close to winning now. And that, that would happen. Even even when you were close to winning, not when you had 20 power, like, dude, I'd be Prince John. And I remember playing the original game. I'd be at like yeah. 10 power and Kate over here, you know, my wife, she loves me, but holy crap. She'd be like, freaking Prince John's at 10 power. Everybody yeah. get him. And it'd be like, holy crap. I just get like yeah. fate smacked by everybody just because I had 10 power. It was like, come on. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm not still salty about those moments, but you know, yeah. I just thought I'd bring in, you know, a little bit, you know, one of the issues that I might have had, you know, with yeah. the game. I don't really run into it as much anymore because there there's just not as many start of turn wind conditions anymore. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they decided that that was not a really good design principle. Um so I think so I am about halfway through that point with you too because 100% again, it's um it's frustrating when you are about to win and three people just come after you like right away. <laughs> I've had, honestly, that happens to me regardless of the game. Cause I'm always right. the biggest target at my group. Cause I'm just so obnoxious on the table. Same. And I just like, yeah, I'm super obnoxious at the table. So they're always targeting me for any game, regardless of uh, whether it's villainous or not. Okay. But it is satisfying though, when three people do fate you and it doesn't work and you still pull out the win. True. I think that's the one saving grace for that rule. True. And I would agree. That's it. I would but agree. That's rare. I would, that is rare. is rare. I would say that certain villains have it easier than others. Like some villains, mm -hmm. I feel like three fates, you're out, bro. Like yeah. <laughs> two. <laughs> the first fate, you're out. Yeah, yeah. First, first fate, yeah. it's over. Oh, that's another. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. That's yeah. another thing. Not okay. all fates are equal in this game. They're just yeah. not. I don't know how to explain it, but if you look through the fate cards of each of these villain decks, some of these fate decks hurt so much more than other ones. Some of them are like mm -hmm. not so painful and other ones are like, holy moly, that's painful. So with the fate cards though, I was wondering, like, is it necessary to have those crazy fate cards in the deck <laughs> in order to tone down the power? Because like it is random too, right? So we don't know right. when we're going to pull them out. Right. And at the same time, it could come at a good time when you're trying to really drop down the other person when they're about to win? Or would you rather have this consistent, um, not as surprising deck of fake cards? Yeah. That's an interesting question. Cause I feel like, right? yeah, that's like a, that's like a design thing. Cause I, I feel like some, I, I feel like some villains do have it a little like it's just a consistent little bit of um, fate deck. Like, like chipping away at them, right? Right, yeah. right. For example, uh -huh. Dr. Facilier, I feel like his fate deck is very balanced to his villain deck. And I think that because of that, that character is one of the best characters in the game. Only because I think that when you fade him, it's like, ooh, that hurt a little bit, but I have answers. Whereas some decks, it's like, ooh, that hurt really bad. I don't have an answer for it. And I'm also just going to go downhill from right here. <laughs> like, I feel yeah, like, yeah, I exactly. feel like some villains are more like that. And some villains are just like, they can deal with things a little bit easier. So I think that's just a difference mm -hmm. to the design principle. And, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm not asking for the game to be balanced. I would never ask that because that's the dumbest request ever. I mean, yeah. no board <laughs> oh. game is balanced. Yeah. Hot take. Yeah. Board games are not balanced games. Like if a game has a deck of cards, it's imbalanced immediately because you could draw a hand of five cards that you really need. And the other person could draw a hand of five cards that are trash. That person is already at a huge advantage over you. That's mm -hmm. just gaming. So I'm not asking for the game to be balanced. 
And I think yeah. that, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I have a lot of fiery opinions about this because I feel like I've never been able to share this stuff. Yeah. It feels really good, okay, so actually. If you're not asking for the game to be balanced, would you rather have consistent <laughs> fake decks, consistent fake cards that chip away, or ones that like have big hits randomly? I think I think I would just do away with big hits altogether. Yeah. I think that's what I would do because I feel like sometimes yeah. you could be... And it's just a personal thing. What opinion. if the character plays that way? That's the thing. It's what like, if the character plays that way? That's yeah, the like, thing. It's, uh, it's, I feel like, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, no, what if like Madame Mask? Madame Mask is the first person I think of. Yeah, um, that's interesting like, because those those are yeah. mixed fate decks too. Marvel's yes, exactly. different in that because they mix the fate decks in Marvel. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Okay, fine. Let's, stick, let's stick with just the base game before we go into Marvel. Um, just the base game. Okay. Is there any character, because I, I can't think of any on the top of my head. Is there any character who's like a hard hitter that needs that huge power differential knockdown in the base game um i would say maleficent would be one because yeah, maleficent okay. her her goal her goal is super easy because she can play the curses she just has to get four on the board and she wins so there's straight mm -hmm. up like a fate card that remove uh, a curse on the board that's 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 painful. That's one of your yeah. but but here's the thing is that when you uh -huh. play a curse card on your board, you're twenty five percent to your goal. <laughs> you have to get oh my god, you so have true. Yeah, you have so to true, get yeah. four cards on the board and you won. Like well, it's at the start of your turn, but still, you get four cards uh, and you will win. So you play one, you're twenty five percent to your goal. So the fate deck needs to be able to at least take out twenty five percent at one given point. Otherwise, you would just win mm -hmm. by by time. Like it would just yeah. take a matter of time. So I think the fate decks really do balance each character to a certain extent. Yeah. Like some do need it rougher. Like, yeah. gosh, it's That's such... a tough design challenge, man. Because like totally symmetry plus the fate deck right. to knock everyone down properly. Like that's, that's hard. But it's so funny because like, I don't think people realize how crazy it is that there are still expansions coming out for this game. Like, how much you have to think about with how many villains that it needs to kind of work with and be balanced with. And I think it's come to the point, well, you know, I do have a little bit of insider knowledge too, because I am a play tester for the game and I'm asked a lot of questions about design stuff for some of these villains. So I guess I have a little bit of insider information, but like to actually get these villains to work with every other villain. I think it's become more of a design principle on the villain itself and less on all of the villains. Mm -hmm. So the focus is less on, you know, what, what we've done before and more on, does this character work? Does this character? Cause it has to be that way. Cause the fate deck has to work with yeah. the, the one character. Mm -hmm. Your every fate deck has nothing to do with other villains. It's very much a solitaire. Okay, that's another thing is that this yeah. is a very much solitaire game at the end of the day. Even with the fate decks, you think it's more it's more of a solitaire? I'd say it's more of a solitaire game at the end of the day, yeah. Huh. Because fate Okay, so think of it this way. I I feel like this is the best way I could explain this. I feel like games that are not solitaire, the game is like out here in the center of the table. Mm -hmm. But games that are more solitaire, the game is like in front of you, the player. Okay. That's fair, yeah. And I feel like Villainous, there's nothing out in the center of the table except for your power tokens, which everyone gains from. But the <laughs> only thing that's in front of you is your board and your villain. And when you're fading other people, that's one action out of seven or so actions that a villain board will have and one you have action to people and like, you don't have yeah. to do it all of these actions are there a may go. yeah so i think at the end of the day it's it's almost like a, 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 a and and i don't mind this is not a critique by any means i'm just saying how it is uh the game is solitaire really it, it kind of is a solitaire it's game not. and i don't mind that at all i like solitaire games <laughs> Yeah. My wife loves solitaire games. <laughs> She's freaking good at them. <laughs> That's what I see because like, I'm not a fan of solitaire. I, I love play interaction, but okay. I didn't realize that it is a solitaire, mostly game. Cause you're not required to fake people. I just realized that now. Yeah. Which you're is not cool too, but it's still incredibly fun. Even if that play interaction isn't required. 
Right, right. right. And that's, that's the thing is like, it's interesting because like fading someone is an interactive experience, but at the end of the day, you're playing a card in their realm. You're going to want to cover those top actions that are going to screw them over the most. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know, actually, this reminds me of a point that you brought up earlier uh, with the with the asymmetry of characters. Um, I feel like one thing I wanted to mention earlier was when I introduce people to this game and like it's one of their first times playing like a real board game. Um, <laughs> yeah, they always ask about what other types of games um, they can play that is similar to to this. So I love how this is a great gateway for asymmetry, right? Dude, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I cannot agree more. It's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite games of all time, because at the end of the day, this is like the only game still that I can introduce to anyone that is a completely asymmetric game. Mm -hmm. I, it just does it so well. It has such a clean system and it works and it's super fun. It's just a fun game. And from here, if they want to get more crazy, if they want to get more asymmetric, we can start thinking of some other games that that get a little more difficult to learn that are also asymmetric. But still, at the end of the day, this is like the best one to start with. I really do think that. Yeah. And that's why I love it so much, because it's like, man, if you want to get into asymmetric gaming, this is like where you should start. The design principles are so easy to see. It's super easy to make your own characters if you're a fan and you just want to make your own characters. This is one of the easiest games to make your own character for yeah. because all you need is a cool little mover and you need to be able to make some cards, grab some paper and draw a board on a piece of paper. Like mm -hmm. it, it just, it makes everybody, I, I guess, be able to be a creator or be creative and everything. I just think it has like all those building blocks to build a community around. Yeah, like, and it's so, I think that's what's really cool about it is that it appeals to such a huge audience. Like, oh my gosh. These, like, I'm like so thankful that these matter, that you have to actually move the mover, the miniatures. Mm -hmm. They have their own unique set of miniatures. It's not like, like full on, like a complete detailed sculpture of Maleficent, but rather like, you know, like it's her symbol. I mm -hmm. think that's a really cool touch on it too. Um, and like, like you mentioned earlier, all the components matter. Like they're there for a reason. They're there purposefully. Um, the asymmetry is like really tight. It's just, it's just it really is. such a cool game that I love introducing all the time. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. The, the mover design has never gotten lazy. It's always intriguing. It's always really cool. These are some of the coolest mm -hmm. board game components ever. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just in this like $25 game, dude. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the basic, so this, this, this one, I was 40 bucks. I think it still is, or maybe 35 now. Mm -hmm. Um, but all the expansions after that are like 30, $25, something around there. Yeah. That's what um, I was scared of too when you asked me um, what, yeah. what what took me so long to get into it. I thought, I like, even watching your videos and everything, I think in the back of my mind, it was always telling me like, this is just a reskin of like a movie game. You know, I think that's <laughs> what like one thing that kind of like pushed me away from it until I experienced it. I was like, oh my God, this is a full on real game. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a full experience. And there was so much love and care that was put into it from the art to the components, to the, to the card play. I mean, it's man. Yeah. There are really only good things to say. I, I mean, even with all the critiques that I do have of the game's design, the game stands so well on its own. Those critiques are nowhere near enough to make me not want to play it. Like I still want to play this game. I, I, I think I just get dogpiled on just because yeah. It's me. It might just be a me thing. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody always in any game, they're just like, oh, Sam's playing. Let's just attack. Let's fate him. Let's get yeah. him a couple of fates right now in the beginning of the game, you know, set him behind. It's yeah. like, oh man. Dude, and I this, feel that, this, man. I'm so glad that you understand me here. <laughs> yeah. I'm always attacked too. Oh man. That's so funny. So, so how many, before we get into, we can talk about Marvel villainous for a little bit if you want. Um, yeah. But before that, how many of the Disney expansions have you played? And so far, do you have a favorite one? Um, let's see. I have the uh, one on one Dalmatians uh, villain. What's okay. Perfectly wretched. Perfectly wretched. I That's have that Corella, one. Corella Deville, Mother yeah, yeah. Gothel, and Pete. Yep. I have Corella Deville. And I think that's, that's the only one aside from Loki and Marvel. 
You don't have despicable plots. Oh, I do have. Yet? I do have despicable plots. I have the okay. the blue Phew. cover on it that Target had on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phew. Phew. Um. Good. My oh, fear from those. <laughs> hmm. I honestly don't really have a favorite yet. I feel like Jafar is still is just like super fun. Still like, your favorite we, one. Yeah. Even when we play with the expansions, I just automatically like go towards Jafar. He's just fun to play with. I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I mean, one of my one of my favorite villains is still from the first set, Captain Hook. Captain Hook? So yeah. there was some magic in that original box set. Like they're they're just because these are older designs does not make them weaker designs i mean they're just yeah. different designs that's really yeah. what it comes down to is that they're very different yeah and my favorite villain of all time was it came out of the second box so Who evil queen was? oh evil queen okay she Dang. is so fun i love her actually okay She's so very speaking of that one. um i i want to talk about my one gripe with this game oh yeah i'm There's ready i'm ready There's yes, only one. and it's honestly it, really it minor and super um I don't know. Superficial is probably the best word for this, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my one gripe is that like, with the base game, uh, when I like, show, maybe it's just like specific to my group, um, but I wish there were more quote notable characters that we kind of knew because honestly, I had to look up Prince John. I had no idea where he was from. Uh, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Let me finish. I know, I know, I know. And then Queen of Hearts, I had to think about it. I was like, wait, is she from Alice in Wonderland? Okay. Because I wish there was like a character or two from like Toy Story or Lion King. Scar, I know, comes down later, which is like great. Yeah. But right, I wish right, like Scar right. was part of the base game or freaking hmm. uh, Sid or Zerg from Toy Story. That would have been really cool. Just because that they grew up more really, with those. Really cool. Uh, right, characters. right, right. That's all. So that's more it's like funny. a family <clears throat> dynamic thing, I feel like, you know? And and that's the, that's the interesting thing about it is that one of their design principles, which you can clearly see, is that mm -hmm. they want to put a big box villain. So like the one, the, the villain that's on the cover of the box, like that's your, your big villain that everybody should know. And that's with every expansion. Mm -hmm. They want a less known villain and then kind of like somewhere that stands in the middle. Like, yeah. for example, um, with Perfectly Wretched, the red box that you have, you've got yeah. Cruella de Vil. Cool. Everybody knows Cruella de Vil. Then you've mm -hmm. got Mother Gothel. She's kind of in the mid range of like a lot of people know about her, but some people yeah. don't really like her. Some people don't really care. Don't and then there's name. like oh, right, yeah, you don't even girl. <laughs> yeah, you might not have actually even known her name. <laughs> I didn't know her name. I was like, oh yeah, the one entangled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. She never and calls then you've her got Mother Gothel. She does. She calls her Mother Gothel. Oh, I thought she, she does, calls right? her Mother. But I never. Oh. Does she ever say Gothel? I don't know if she says Gothel. I think she just says okay, like mother. Now that's weird. I knew it was Mother Gothel because I know the yeah. story of Rapunzel from fairy tales and it's still okay. the same. Mother Gothel. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Uh -huh. And then Pete, who black and white Pete, I mean, not a lot of people knew who that is. Like, yeah. I mean, even if they did, like some people would like, you know, but that's funny is that some people's favorite from that box was Pete because that was the character that they connected most with. So mm -hmm. This is spanning all of Disney. Like there's so many different ages represented here. Like yeah. Prince John, though, this one did not connect with a lot of people. I watched Robin Hood, the cartoon so yeah. many times as a kid, even though it was before yeah. my time, I would watch this as a child, like over and over. Cause I loved Robin Hood so much. So to see mm -hmm. Prince John represented in that first set, I was like, this is an instant cop for me. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear that, like of the different, like it depends on which villains you appreciate more. Yeah. based on which set you might enjoy more. That's what I like. I love about it too. Like despite, you know, how you grew up with uh, the Disney characters, they're at least expanding on it. So that's like what I mentioned with Scar. Like he shows up later, right? Right, so that's right, super right, cool. right. That's just it. And now we've got, what was that? Who do you want to see show up next? Who Who's do I want to see show up? your most wanted villain next? Oh, it's so tough, man. It's so tough. I, I feel like my most wanted villain won't ever be in the game for good mm -hmm. reason because his goal is so bad. Like yeah. there's no way to make that goal. <laughs> there's no way to make this goal good. And that oh. would be Frollo, Claude Frollo from oh. um, Hunchback of Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Mm -hmm. um, there's just no way to make that goal appropriate for all ages because it's inappropriate. <laughs> so yeah. it's either it's either inappropriate or it's an uncomfortable theme. So either yeah. way, I get why he'll never be in the game or, or likely will never be in the game. 
but I still would love to have him in the game because he has one of the coolest villain songs ever. And he really is like such a bad villain. Like you, you just hate the guy, you know? Yeah. The one that I would like that I think would actually be in the game that I still want to see is um, Mulan. The, the Shan Mulan. Yu, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shan Yu, Shan Yu. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see right there. I would love to see that. Yep. How about you? That, that would be... Sean Yu would actually, because I wanted to mention Mulan too in the base that like I wanted to see him. Sean Yu, 100% would be my most wanted villain. Um, he's such a, like a badass character. Like he's just oh, a yeah. classic definition of just bad, quote bad. Yes. Um, but it, it works because I just want to see representation from Mulan in there. Same, same. Mm -hmm. That would be so cool. And it's kind of sad because like, dude, eventually we're going to run out because all the newer Disney movies, they're steering away from villains. They're steering away from the villain uh, construct of like every story has to have a villain. I feel like they're mm -hmm. moving away from that. Like frozen two, there was no real villain. It was like the forest. It was like yeah, yeah. Elsa struggling with her internal struggles. Encanto was the new movie that just came out. So that good. one didn't have really a villain. Uh, cause I, I would never put Abuela as a villain. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, true. it was more of like the, the house or the family dynamics. And so, it's interesting to see like all these stories coming out now that don't have crazy villains like we grew up when we were kids that mm -hmm. they used to have. Cause like, yeah. dude, Shan Yu, he was freaking scary, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming too? down he's that hill with, with the army, army of yeah. Mongols. Like, dude, yeah. what the frick, man? <laughs> and like yeah. Frollo, he's like super disturbing and scary, man. He's like the Phantom of the again, Opera. Like, I creepy. forget how he's like, but. He's against like gypsies and everything. So it's yeah. like very like a, it's such a dark theme. It's such a, an adult theme for a kid's mm -hmm. movie. And like, that's really like what it used to be. They used to do a lot of like really heavy villain themes mm -hmm. and now they're just not as much. And I get it, but also it's going to be kind of sad when we're like, what about the villains? Like yeah. Dr. Facilier, man, he's a dark villain too. I remember watching that and being like, dude, they're really diving into the voodoo aspect of this yeah. guy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and like the dark voodoo aspect, like voodoo is not just like a dark concept, but like, man, they really get into like the shadows, the demons. And it's mm -hmm. like, this is a kid's movie. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> not anymore as an adult watch, rewatching it back. Not anymore. Oh yeah, dude. Watching, watching that dude. I love that movie. Like that movie is so, so good. Yeah. But yeah, I can't even imagine like what I would think of it if I was like a child watching it. Who knows? They'd, they'd probably call it uh, going forward semi-villainous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually, we're just going to have Frozen, the forest versus Encanto, the house. Like, yeah, you're exactly. going to be playing the house or the forest. That'd actually exactly. be pretty cool. That would be cool, that actually, honestly, yeah. that actually would be cool to have the house be a villain. Dang, are we designing yeah. a new expansion right now? I think so. And we I could have so. Soul. We could have Soul be another one, and it could be... Oh, Soul is so good. But it's Soul like, is... It it's like... Really, yeah. Lack of creativity is the villain. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, like, brave. Choices. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the concept of just choices. In oh soul. yeah. Yeah. Choices. There we go. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good know. luck with that one. Yeah. Brave is another difficult one because uh -huh. there's no villain in brave. It's a, it's yeah. a journey of family. And yeah. like, <laughs> Raya, have you seen Raya? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. There's, like there too. Like she changed. Spoiler alert. She right. changes. Right. It's, so, it's not really a villain. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more of like a group of people that end up actually teaching a really good lesson about community and unity like it man yeah disney's yeah. changed <laughs> i'm for it though i feel like they're i'm for it too i love their stories because there's they're so much more there's so much more depth in the characters right which is why it's cool because like now they're going towards this gray area where it's not just black and white anymore right right, right. So. there's no just like good good hero bad villain now it's the complexities of human nature and maybe mm -hmm. your own choices are what you're going to be struggling with as a conflict like with elsa yeah. and stuff she struggles exactly. with so much of herself like that's the whole story yeah their perspective Man. of justice and stuff it's right I'm right it's right. going to be translated into a game I don't know either, but they still have a lot to go on, you know, Disney. So actually this is something to bring up is that, um, they just opened the door to Pixar villains because the newest expansion coming out very soon, if you're watching this in, you know, January, January. it's going to be coming out end of February ish, I believe kind of early March time. Okay. Um, I think, um, around there, um, 
but that that set's coming with Lotso, Syndrome, and Madame Mim. So that's two Pixar villains getting thrown in there. Yeah. Wait, that who opens is, the door. Lotso again? Lotso is the villain in Toy Story 3. Oh, the so he's bear. the bear, the yeah. strawberry bear. Oh, how yeah, funny! Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're bringing they're bringing <laughs> yeah. him. This expansion has been announced, and it's it's gonna be really fun. I've played mm-hmm. playing it for a long time, so I, I have an advantage. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm stoked, dude! I'm so excited for people to get a hold of this expansion because Madame Mim might be one of my favorite characters ever designed. So mm-hmm. she's real fun. The blueberry. I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> what? The blueberry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. dude, uh, Madame Mim is so funny because it's like just based off of a wizard stool. She's only in the movie for like three minutes uh, wow. in that King Arthur movie. Was it Sword in the Stone? I think yeah. it was really old Disney movie. You want to get into Marvel Villainous or? Sure, we can talk about Marvel. Chill. Um, my biggest. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say right. So, dude, I have so much to say about Marvel Villainous. But I'm going to try to keep it as concise as possible. Um, I believe in you. Let's see. So with Marvel Villainous, I just feel like, hey, hold on, Luna's going crazy too. Do you hear, do you hear her? I, I hear her a little bit. Yeah, that's cute. Dude, she's going she's like, burr, 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 burr. yeah, like because of the mail and stuff. Right, right. Um. Okay. So with Marvel Villainous, I feel like I wasn't, okay. You know what? Let's start with Loki first. I Because did Loki come out first or did Marvel Villainous come out first? So Marvel Villainous came out first. The base box came with Thanos, uh-huh. Ultron, uh, oh gosh, Hela, Killmonger, yeah. and Taskmaster. There you go. Okay, so that's my question. My question about the Marvel Villainous line is that because there's such a huge power differential like in the MCU between all <laughs> of these villains, oh boy. I feel like that part is even translated in the game. Okay. Do you agree or not? So what you're saying is like if a villain is stronger, they're actually better in the game? No, I feel like because a villain is actually stronger in the MCU, in the comics, like Thanos, for instance, um, right. his objectives become much more complicated in the game or like more difficult to achieve. Interesting. Because Interesting. When we played, I feel like it was so difficult for Thanos to collect all his stones. I, I just agree with that completely. Yeah. yeah. Thanos is one of the hardest characters in that set. Um, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I would say that, no, no, no. Thanos <laughs> is tough. Uh, he's a little bit easier, I would say, with more players. But don't even try a two-player game with Thanos. I feel like that's a very difficult thing to attempt. Good yeah. luck. Um, however, uh, it, it's almost interesting because I feel like Marvel is, it's so interesting. I, it's such a, it's such an interesting <laughs> Yeah. Why is that the only word that I could use right now? Mar- Marvel, it it's almost like it's it's more strategic than Disney villainous. Mm-hmm. I don't think people are going to like to hear this, but I, I truly believe that Marvel, the game, is actually more strategic than Disney villainous, the game. However, I think that because it's more strategic, it can oftentimes feel much more unfair and it can feel harder and it can feel more like somebody else is running away with the game because that can happen. Like somebody yeah. can can actually win really easily and somebody could be struggling over there at the beginning of their game. It's not easy. It's like a very difficult game. And I think that because of that, because it's a little bit more for like gamer gamers, Yeah, I, I think that you're going to find a little bit more asymmetry in the scoring and like how much of a goal that you're actually getting. Like some villains are just easier to pick up and play. And I feel like what Disney villainous set up as a game design is that you can just kind of pick up most of these characters and do decently well with most yeah. of them mm-hmm. in Marvel. Some characters I would never give to somebody for their first game. Like I would literally tell them, don't play Thanos. Don't do it. I know that you <laughs> want to play Thanos, yeah. but don't play him. Yeah. <laughs> He's very difficult to win the game with. And I loved that because it gave me an opportunity to feel like I can really get like good with these people like and i can play a group game and and find all these cool really niche strategies with them i think the only thing though is that you do find a lot of unfairness in my opinion with with the fate deck sometimes with this version um because the fate decks are all mixed up at the beginning of the game it's a huge difference between like you don't have your own fate deck in in marvel 
every villain comes with a fate deck and those fate decks are mixed. And so when you fate, you look at what cards you have as an option and it will tell you, it'll give you like little prompts and say like, this card goes to Thanos's deck. So it'll probably hurt Thanos more, Mm -hmm. but because the fate deck's so big, it leaves so much opportunity to screw over only a few villains, but yeah. not everyone equally. See, with okay, that means I'm such a good uh, point. I want to bring up too. It's like with Marvel villainous, like why, why make the fate deck a single deck instead of keeping it to the original? Like everyone has their own fate deck. Like why make it one condensed version? Maybe I need to play it more to like understand why. I like three or four plays with it already. But it's like, I just don't understand the design choice behind making one single fate deck. Do you know? Yeah, I, I think I do. I, yeah. I, I understand it from a thematic perspective because these games at the end of the day are mm-hmm. all about the theme blending in with the mechanics of the game. Yeah. And I think one of the things about Marvel is that you see different characters pop up in everybody's stories all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, okay. Tony Stark is in the lives of all these villains. Like he, he is intro. He's seen Ultron. He's seen Thanos. You know, he's, he knows all of these villains. They all exist in the same kind of universe Yeah. with Disney. They're more secured their own stories. Like true. Captain Hook has Peter Pan and has Wendy, but Wendy and, and Peter Pan have never seen Jafar. Yeah. Uh, but like with Marvel, every character is in the MCU as a whole. Therefore, mm-hmm. mixing the fate decks kind of opens the door for heroes to be able to be in any story and mm-hmm. for the multiverse to kind of exist. I yeah. think that's kind of what the direction was with that. Yeah. I, I love the idea behind it. I love right. the theme behind it. But the execution and like how it plays out from mm-hmm. our plays hasn't been that fun with it. Like yeah. I, we I don't, think so, if it was individual, I feel like we would enjoy it way more. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So we, we don't play with, um, with the events. Oh, okay. Cause there's, there's three modes you can play with, uh, events and you can do as many events as you want to pop mm-hmm. up. You can do where you only play with, uh, one public event can be around at the same time. And then you can play a mode where there's no events at all. I take out the events. Every game I play of Marvel villainous, I don't play with them. Yeah. Just a personal, just a personal thing. Like that's just the way that I play the game. I enjoy it more without the events. Some people get a lot of satisfaction out of those event cards, but I, for me and my family, we just don't enjoy them that much. So we play without the events. And to me, it feels a lot quicker. It's a, it's a quicker game. And also I don't have to worry about like, okay, I could throw some guys on this event card. Um, and like every time you throw on an event card, you're not throwing them on your board. So you're usually going down in your goal and there's like all that complex stuff too. So Mm -hmm. to kind of simplify it for me and my wife, especially for two player games, we just, we get, we get rid of the events. (laughs) Goodbye. Because there'll be like an event that might come out at the beginning of the game that says you draw one less card every turn. And it's like, well, we're each going to have to spend a lot of resources to get that event card off this map and neither of us By have those resources three, yeah. at the beginning of the game. Yeah. It's like, oof, that hurt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we've, we've enjoyed it a lot in group settings without the event cards. That's how we enjoy Marvel villainous mm-hmm. more. And I think that one of the things is like the best expansion to a base game was in my opinion, the Loki expansion. Mm-hmm. I feel like really all those villains are so good at group play intermixed with the base five villains. Like I feel like they all mesh super well and it makes the game more fun when you add in those, those other ones. Okay. To me, to me, I don't know. That's, that's definitely me. Like I feel like playing a crazy game with like Loki and Thanos at the same time (laughs) creates some of the craziest stuff. And it's so cool. It feels very like MCU, like, Loki's over here jumping around in people's realms and Thanos is sending guys to collect individual stones. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's crazy, but it's super fun. That's what I, that's what I do love about it. That's what brings us back is because the theme plays well in that sense where like, I feel like I'm a crazy Titan, like sending all these like minions to like collect stuff for me or like Loki actually traveling through different dimensions. Like that stuff is super cool. Hands yeah. down, that's what brings us to um, open the box and play again. 
but it's Definitely. more so just that combined faith deck that's just like yeah well man. you know what the funny thing is dude is that a lot of people uh don't like that combined fate deck like that's a huge contested point i think of marvel villainous it's definitely Same. one of those things that, like you people either love it or they don't like it at all and i feel mm-hmm. like um yeah that's 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 definitely one of the concepts of that i i'm I like, like somewhere uh, really so what yeah. would you do what, what would you do would you say um think about it now i feel like they could just come out with like a standalone fate like standalone um, expansion with just fake cards that are tailored oh, to each villain. Interesting. That's okay. It. That's literally, so, oh, that so you, that's it. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. So you buy another like card expansion that just gives individual fate decks for all the base villains, that would, essentially. That would fix, like fix the game Boom. for me. There you go. You know, I think, I think, it, deck. so I think at that point I would ask the question of, why make a Marvel villainous if it's going to be the same game as Disney villainous? It's not necessarily the same game, but more because, so, like you, because like you said earlier, like their strategies and their winning conditions are still That's very true. different. That's true. Right? That's so true. They, they still retain their asymmetry, but if you want to keep to the core what villainous is and like how it's like you know succeeding in that sense of like being really fun, like you keep that asymmetry there and you keep the mm-hmm. fate deck as it is um, right so like they could still appeal to the other half of the audience that hate it me included um, <laughs> and just have like decks for like loki and thanos and ultron like these are ultron right. specific fate decks and boom there you go there's another 50 percent of your crowd um how like iron man like shows up in like most of them like their actual um counterparts or mm-hmm. the villains that he's specific towards to. See, they can still show Iron Man, but like different forms depending on which villain that he faced because he was a different person when he faced uh, Thanos versus when he faced Ultron. So right. he can still be thematic in that and show like his different suits, like the 42, Mark 42, Mark Nano, nano right. suit tech ver- versus right, right, Thanos, right. right? Yeah, the nano so suit They can version. still show that and it'd be so sick. So you're saying like, even with the individual fate deck idea, you could have mm-hmm. Tony Stark exist in both villains fate decks. In different forms. Yeah. In exactly. different, in different, different forms, which is really what they mm-hmm. do. They, they already do that. Actually, Madam Mask has mm-hmm. Tony Stark and I think Iron Man pops up as a, as a, a um, different one. Like there's Tony right. Stark yeah, fate yeah. and then there's Iron yeah. Man fate in somebody else's deck. And so sometimes you can have Tony Stark over here and Iron mm-hmm. Man over here. And it's like, whoa what's going yeah. on it's crazy that's um, true. Like, I, it kind of brings you up marvel champion vibes but yes been like yes specific forms when you face that villain at that right time. right i could totally see that mm-hmm. i could totally see that and and yeah. like the thing about it is like i i definitely agree with you like i don't think that i don't think like for me it works but i understand when people have a gripe with it especially coming from villainous it seems like a little bit like oh what, what, what's this why is this different why would why wouldn't they just keep it the same way? So I get yeah. that. I totally understand it. So I think we're kind of in I think we're kind of mostly in agreement on all of this, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice yeah. to hear. Like yeah. And yeah, I'd say I, I love like their choice for trying to be experimental. Totally. Like I like I appreciate that, but it just wasn't fun for me. Yeah. Simple, totally. Like bottom line, like that's just what it was. I think we're I think we're coming to the end of this, but I think I have a good mm-hmm. note to start the end here. And that is that though the combined fate deck doesn't work for like you, and I know that you're, you're mm-hmm. a gamer, like you love games, you like the competitiveness of them. And I feel like the mm-hmm. fate deck you don't like because it makes the game feel less competitive. I don't know if I'm wrong, Yep. Nope. Yeah, that's but I feel like that on. might be why. Yeah. And I think that that's why a lot of people have problems with it is that the fate deck feels a little bit less competitive. But I think the one thing that like the community of villainous, and I feel like we all have to kind of remember at some point is that this game, I still believe at the end of the day was designed for families. It was designed for people to gather together to be able to play this game, not in the way of like, I'm going to win every time if I'm good at it, you know? Yeah. And so I wonder if, you know, if I just grabbed some random family that liked Marvel Villainous, Mm-hmm. Is this going to be their favorite game ever? Or are they going to have problems with the individual, like the the combined fate deck, you know? Like, is that going to be mm-hmm. an issue to them to have this fate deck combined? Or are they not even going to think about that because they're just having fun playing the game? You yeah. know? I wonder that's about a, that because I, I feel no, like we really always approach it from a gamer point of view, like hardcore gamer. But I feel like the vast majority of people that play these games, th- this is all sold at Target. The vast mm-hmm. majority that play these games are just the standard people that saw it on the shelf, grabbed it and bought it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, that's crazy. Such fair, that's such a fair perspective because now um, thinking back to when I played this game with um, my sister-in-law who was like not a gamer at all playing Marvel mm-hmm. Villainous, her problem obviously wasn't the Fate deck, um, but more so how complicated the villains were to play and understand. Interesting. So interesting. That's what it was. So I wonder if that combination was almost too. I I think I truly do believe that it kind of fixes itself with the Loki expansion. I think the adding in the Loki stuff really helps mm-hmm. the game. I don't know why, but I feel like the Fate cards in that one they just all mesh really well with the new ones and it just feels a little bit like balanced i I don't know how to explain it and also those villains are just so well designed i I really really like that that combination but i'm almost wondering if like the fate deck is like super simplified in a way whereas the actual villains are more complicated and i wonder if they were thinking like because we already have super complicated marvel villains Mm -hmm. we need to tone down the design of our fate deck and make it simpler to to learn yeah, I, I wonder See, if that was kind of the design yeah. thinking there. I don't know. I don't know. I was not in the yeah. back room, you know? <laughs> no, like that's where I have like so much respect for them. Like <laughs> I would not want to be in their shoes because it's easy for me to just like take two seconds and say what was bad about it. Totally. To actually come up with a solution that with the Marvel IP, I'm going to appeal to families and I'm also going to appeal to hardcore gamers and I'm also going to make right. everything fun, but I'm also going to make everything approachable and inviting. That's right. I don't even know how to even start to do stuff like that. I feel like that's like the hardest thing is like these games, they're still standing strong. They're still able to keep chugging away. You know, (laughs) it's Mm. like, dude, this is like a crazy blend of like, anybody can pick this up. You can be somebody new to games. You could have just been at target and bought a new game and learn it. Um, Or you could be a hardcore gamer and you still enjoy this game. Like it, it appeals to so many different audiences. So not everybody's going to be, uh, super stoked about everything that they release, I find. So it's, yeah, it's interesting to the see the thing. divisions. That is, that is the best, best thing. thing. Yeah. The best thing to find in a game when you can find a, a middle ground between hardcore gamers being satisfied versus new gamers um, enjoying the game. Still being and, able to play yep. it, still being able to enjoy the game. But yep. I think that in my personal opinion, the future for Villainous as a whole, I think it's pretty bright. Like I think it's only going up from here. I, I still think yeah. it's going up. Like I don't, I never have felt like the expansions are going downhill. I, mm-hmm. I really do think that each expansion improves uh, at least gameplay wise on the previous one. Like they definitely take what the last set had and make it different with the new set. And you're yep. not going to like every villain in the new set. That'd be crazy if you liked every villain. They're all very different. <laughs> yeah but they're still bringing in new ideas. That's crazy. Yep, new ideas, <laughs> new content, like new stories. Like I think that's what makes me excited about Villainous too. Is like, who are they going to release next? Right, right. All mm-hmm. that speculating, all that wondering. It's so cool. So yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a pretty good note to, to end, to end on. If you're, if you're out there and, and you have opinions about Villainous, if it's negative, positive, anything, always remember, be respectful with that opinion. That's the biggest That is the big, like, this is a perfect example of like, man, if you disagree about something within a game, you can still be respectful about it and, and come to terms with that. So whatever your perspective is on the game, be respectful about it. But also I'd like to hear it. Yeah. drop Maybe, maybe comment down below. We'll check it out and, uh, and find out what we got going on there. But, um, yeah, that, that was, dude, do you have anything else to say? No, dude, that was fun, man. Like, (laughs) It's funny. It's fun going from doing Imperium where we had like mixed opinions where we were like completely like nope uh, on different points, but right. versus villainous where we like ninety nine percent agree. Right, you know, right, right. We pretty much we pretty yeah. much agree on everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're just in like full agreement right now. This is just good vibes right. here. And now next, you know, next episode we're probably going to be right back at each other's throats. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> let what... us know. Let us know. Yes. Which game we should cover next i don't know off the top of my head which one we would disagree on anymore other than dude imperium but let us know what you want to see next drop it down below what game do you want to see us cover next we'll we'll try and we'll try and make it happen we're going to do our best but the next episode is going to be on tim's channel so i will see you there thank you